the untold story because he went out there with Patrice and Norton and Steinbergs and and uh, and Bobby Kelly and all those guys went and uh, Keith. So uh, some of them are like some of those guys are like were goofier, like they didn't really get laid until they started getting fame. And so Keith was like so that when they went some down, of those like, guys that describes yeah, everybody in comedy who the fuck was, gets laid and goes into comedy to, i was trying to be uh polite but That's everybody <laughs> but he uh so in in brazil what they used to say patrice used to say this all the time that it's like uh it's almost like you get the girlfriend experience uh what's up square Pit brigade on this episode we have comedian jim florentine he's here and we discuss being an older father getting divorced fucking prostitutes with patrice why not why you want why women want assertive men um and uh why women find brutal honesty so sexy mm. um this yeah, was a this really a good, good one. one we enjoyed this immensely yeah, a lot um, of fun a lot of dad advice too uh yeah. really good technical show in in yeah. that sense and if you love the show and you love the technical stuff uh join us over at patreon.com slash manschool 202 that's where we do all the uh, bonus content and listener mail questions and uh, we do a bonus show every week after the show and uh, this week's episode, we continue our conversation with Jim Florentine as we discuss the value of honesty, uh, uh, seeing women at their worst, and just how being brutally honest is a benefit to your relationships and your dating scene. So that's over at patreon.com slash manschool202 to support us. Also, if you want to support us, uh, I do relationship consultations. You can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And if you want a consultation from Dante, go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Uh, yo, what's up, y'all? What's up, Square Pin Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited because uh, this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 570 times before, but this time I really mean it. Uh, we got a special guest, but before I do that, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, Dante, I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. You know me. I'm living my best life each day, and then when I think it can't get better, it somehow gets better. What's that about? How's that happen? Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm, 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 we got a special guest. I want to introduce him, bring him and talk to him immediately. Um, this dude, one of the funniest guys I know, um, sharpest with Comedy Central, um, cranky anchors, uh, just classic stuff. Um, really good dude. Uh, give it up for Jim Florentine, y'all. Give it up for Jim Florentine. Yeah. It's good What's to see you, dude? Dante. How's it going, man? It's good to I'm see you. I'm good, man. I'm good. So fucking, um, so fucking good. I had, uh, I missed you on, uh, like I was supposed to do, uh, Godfrey's because I co-host with Godfrey and I missed you on there and I'm I'm so mad that I fucking missed you on that because I that was like uh right up my alley. Jesus Christ. Um how you been though? I've been good. I've been yeah. doing real, you know, touring, doing the same stuff, you know, just gigs. I got a kid, you know, doing all that shit. How old's your kid? He's 12. Wow, I got a three-year-old. What's wrong with me, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. I uh yeah, I'm one and done, man. I can't go through it again. But yeah. uh, no, it's it's fucking great though. Well this, Jim, this is Jim my first... loves his kid. Jim yeah. loves his kid. Like I've this seen Jim a couple of times. My first and last, my first and only kid. I mean, I had a stepdaughter when you went back in the days, but I'm not with that mother and uh and uh and she doesn't talk to me anymore. So <laughs> which is which is uh, you know, I mean, thanks. But um, yeah, it's 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 awesome having a kid. Uh, and people always said, "Did you get this? How old are you now, Jim?" Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. So I'm fifty-six, and pe- everybody was like, "Yo, what are you crazy?" You got-? But what I was trying to tell them is that you, nothing is a problem. Do you know what I mean? Like even something that's a problem is not a problem. You just you kind of look at the obstacle and you go, "Okay, how? Okay, this is this is a little hurdle." But I I know I've been there, done that, seen so much that all I got to do is navigate around this. Do you feel that as well? Yeah, I remember, you know, I had my kid at 46. I had him late, too. And I just realized, you know, uh, I was dating this girl for like four months. She got pregnant. I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's 
let's get married. We'll have the baby. And I just realized at that moment, okay, my life is shifting. I'm not right. I can't, if I'm going to do this, I got to be a hundred percent in no more pussy on the road, no more right. dating other chicks. And then I'm, 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 I'm in this is my life now. So right. I just made that adjustment. It was fine. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. I just had to think about it. I go, okay, if I do this, I got to be all in. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird how you, um, just because of your, I mean, just that I always, I kind of look at it like, you know how when people go back to college and they're not necessarily the smartest people in the world, but they're paying for those credits. And so everything is a 4.0 because, so you, you realize it, it really wasn't about being smart. It was actually just about doing, being the, work. This, doing the work and, yeah. and, and, and showing up and doing the work. Um, same thing with me. I like, I had a, I had a, a my, my wife had a, she knew she was a fan of my podcast in England and uh, she actually hit Harry up and was like, Oh, I really want to, you know, come on the show. And I was like, is she hot? Right. Mm, of course. <laughs> that was the first question. That's always the first question. First of all, uh, first of all, I already knew that before I went to you. Cause I knew that would be the first question. <laughs> you don't know how much, um, uh, how, how I comb through. I end up being like a, uh, like a roadie for Van Halen in 87, you know, just, <laughs> Yeah, you just, go out to the crowd, you get yeah. the audience to go, hey, uh, Dante wants to meet you. Here's a backstage Dante, pass. Yes. Dante's very interested in your work. Yeah. Dante. Uh, <laughs> your tits, I mean, your work. Yeah, yeah. So, so Same thing. We we, we, we met, we, we hooked up. She was doing, you know how in Europe they do that goofy shit? Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm backpacking across America, goofy, you know, stuff that we don't do here. And uh, she came here, hung out with me for a couple of days, went to uh, L.A., said she missed me, came back. And then she ended up staying with me for the rest of the visa. What we, you know, back and forth. I went out to England. She came out back here, back and forth, back and forth. And um, and then uh, I don't know how long was it, Harry? Maybe like a year. It was about a year or so. Yeah. Back and forth. And then the last time after that is when you found out. uh you're having a baby. Yeah, she was in England. She's like, I think I'm pregnant. And I was like, kind of like a year like, and change. Yeah, I don't I didn't have any kids. I'm 52 years old. You you go well. what you know, immortality is moving your DNA to the next generation. I mean, it, nobody gives a fuck about heaven. It's like, what am I what am I doing? Right. Did you kind of feel that way, too, when it like, OK, I'm going to do this? I was, I thought I was never going to have kids. You know, right. I was pretty much, I'm like, I'm good. I don't need them. And then when it happened, it was the first girl I ever knocked up right? ever in my life. And I, and I thought about, it. I'm like, you know what, let's, if you're in, I'm in, let's do this. Right, so right. I wasn't sure. It just, that's just what came about. And I'm like, all right, this is what I'm doing now. So uh, how much, I knew, how much I, knew I couldn't have been, I knew with my twenties or thirties, I would have been an awful dad. I was like, yeah. about my career doing yeah. sets. I didn't give a shit about anybody, anything. So it was, I think it was a you know it was a good time in my life when I were at that age to do it. How old is she? She was um, I don't know. She was probably twenty nine at that time. I was forty six. Right. This, it was I probably too yeah probably too old for her. You know what I mean for me. But what am I gonna wait, do? Wait wait too old for you or too old for her? Too old for me. Meaning Jim was too oh, old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, meaning, meaning no, she was too old for me. Oh, yeah, for Jim as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just. She was a little around, long but, in the tooth, yeah. buddy. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, Jim, like, on, Jim and Jim don't have time for that. All right, yeah, let's like, be honest. <laughs> That's fucking great. I think I, uh -huh. I think mine was thirty-one. Thir she was her early thirties. Yeah. yeah. No, she might have been twenty-nine too. So if it was thirties, it was very early thirties. Yeah, I, if I, I remember, think, yeah. yeah, she was thirty-one, maybe thirty or something, twenty-nine and thirty. That's what it was, and I was like, ah, eh, you know, um, why not? You know, like I was like, I always wanted, I always wanted one of those. You know, I mean, yeah, one of those. Yeah, <laughs> you put uh, as much thought. You sorry, sorry, you put as much thought into that kid as you're uh, buying a Cadillac. You know what? Yeah, why not? Well, well, always, a classic. You know, classic. you know, you, know how you you get a certain amount, you buy a classic. But go ahead, Jim. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I remember Seinfeld saying something one time. He was comedians are very like they're 20 years behind. Like if their age is 58, they're really 38. Yeah. If they're 40, they're really 20. It really takes us a long time to mature. We're yeah. not like normal people. So I it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, the comedy keeps you young. I remember Donnell Rollins was talking about he would do this high school 
reunion kind of comedy show that he would do every Thanksgiving. And then one year he's like, look at all these old motherfuckers. Like these guys are old. Right. He's like, he's like, oh shit, I went to high school with them. I'm old. It's also a different, I think we, we're a, like I'm 56, I'm a different 56. Do you know what I mean? Because of the nature of what we do. I don't know if it's that we're always laughing and having fun. And, and, and there's, I think that keeps you young to a certain extent, but I think it's weird when you say, uh, comics are not mature, but I don't know because we're mature in other ways. I mean, just the way in order to do comedy, you got, I mean, you got to be smart. Like you hear comics say this all the time. Oh yeah, I'm a dumb fuck. I'm not, they're not, they're, they're there's no way you could put things together the way we do in comedy and not be smart. You gotta, it's like what Sherrod says. You gotta, you gotta know shit to be funny, you know, because it's so wild like that, you know? No, well, that's true. And it's same thing with musicians. I know a lot of musicians. They, they know how to play that guitar or yeah. sing or play the drums, but they don't know anything else in life, <laughs> but they're amazing at that. And that's a lot of comics. Yeah. Comics yeah. are amazing at putting something together and, and picking things apart and making it funny and figuring out how they could, you know, make this into a bit. But then other aspects of our life were way behind. Yeah. Like, like life in general. <laughs> yeah. Life stuff. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I, I, one of the things that I found that just, um, so, one of the things that happened was, uh, so my wife ended up taking my kid back to England. So I, I, I'm traveling back and forth and I was really, and kind of did it under false pretenses. But I kind of, I, you know, like Harry was like, yo, what are you going to do? I'm sorry that this happened. But I mean, we all know guys who are comics and even guys who are not comics. There's nobody who we know who didn't grow up with their father in their life who don't end up extremely damaged because of it or don't end up looking for their father later. Do you know what I mean? Like you got 50 year old guys who are still affected by the fact that they didn't grow up with their father. Right. And, and so, and they always kind of do that pilgrimage to find their father. Like I'm really close with Joe, with DeRosa and, you know, DeRosa's adopted, but he even went on that dilemma. Do you know what I mean? He went on that 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 pilgrimage to find his birth parents and stuff like that. So it's a it's a weird thing. So I'm I'm not afraid. I mean, I mean, she, she's not trying to keep me away from him. like and, and thank God for for, uh, you know, technology, because I literally I probably FaceTime with him five or six times a day. Right. Um, so it, it, there's always a presence. And because I'm later on in my career where I can I could take a couple grand, jump on a flight and go and hang out with him for 10, 15 days at a time. But, um, man, it, it affects men in a way that I don't think people really understand. Did you grow up with your with your parents and stuff? I did. Um, you know, my parents married 33 years. I come from a family of seven kids. They were together. My dad died at 58. So I was 28 when he died. Okay. So, and my mom died like three or four years ago. So I had, you know, my dad up till I was 28, my mom up till like I was 55. So I was pretty lucky, right? you know, to have yeah. that. And um, so, no, I mean, I, you know, my dad definitely died at young at 58. So I yeah. wish I would have had him longer and stuff, but that's always the way I look with my kid. It's like, I want to be around for him. Right. Right. You know, so I want to be healthy and stuff and just be, it be part of his life for as long as possible. And yeah. not just be reckless and die at 61 and then he doesn't yeah. have a dad. Jim, at, you're a guy who's in, in pretty good shape as you get older in your 50s and stuff. Is that Was that intentional or have you always tried to stay in shape? Or was it having a kid that made you go, yeah, I, I got to take better care of myself? No, it was before that. Like, when my, you know, my dad died of a massive heart attack at 58 mm, okay. and then there was no man on, on my father's side that lived past uh, 60 for wow. a long time until my uncle just recently. So I was like, shit, when he died at 28, I said, I got to start getting in shape and working out. So I don't want to, I don't want to be dead at 58, especially now that I'm at that age. Right. You know, you really, and when you have a kid, you're like, I want to be around. I want to see him get married. I want to, you know, send him off to college and all that shit and just, you know, be there for him when he needs some advice. So all that yeah. shit is a great way to describe it. <laughs> you know, all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know, you do. You just want to, you know, <laughs> look, because eventually, look, I get he's 12 it. It's right just now. funny to describe and Like it. 15, he's, he's gonna, probably going to hate me. He's going to be hanging out with his kids. He'll be like, dad's annoying. And then he's going to be off to college and he's not going to be around. Who the fuck, you know? And then he's going to be an adult after that. So, you know, yeah. that's going to be frustrating because you're like, you know, we're like buddies. We just fucking hang out all the time. But if, I know I'm not going to lose him soon. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like I don't know if that will happen. I mean, I think that happens to parents in general. I think it would be different for you because, like, you're a cool-ass, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're a cool-ass dad, whereas, you know, dads, most dads, it's like, I mean, I know when you think about the guys that you grew up with, they're not cool like you are. You know what I mean? Because it's just, it's, it's over for them, you know, and we're still kind of hustling. No, it's, it, he does like that. And he likes the comedy aspect. He knows all the comics. He likes being part of the scene, knowing all that stuff. I, yeah. I mean, we, we like the same sports teams, mm. you know, we like the same music. So I take him to concerts, I think the sporting events. So there's a lot of stuff that we do together. Right. So maybe I won't, but you know, when he's gone, he's away. In and I know he wants to hang out with his friends. I did that my whole childhood. I just, as right. soon as I got home from school, I just want to, you know, before that, you know, when he was younger, it was like, yeah, we just hang out as soon as he gets home from school. Now he's out with his friends constantly. And I'm like, I got to I got to understand that's what he wants to do, even though I want to, you know, because I'm divorced. So I only see him half the week. Right. So, so I don't you're, have, you're divorced from her now. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's, how far away is she from you or, and him? From like you? 30 minutes. OK. That's 25, cool. 30 minutes. So it's, it's not bad. Did how? Why do you think you got divorced? Because she was fucking some dude. Oh God! <laughs> you know that'll put a cramp in any marriage. Yeah, a little, a little, a, little, yeah, yeah. You know. Jeez, don't yeah. you think you're being a little picky? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I should have should have reconsidered. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you think that happened? Or what do you think that? It, do you think it was just her, her uh, immaturity, or what? Probably. I mean, yeah. I mean, I you know, I don't know. I just. Uh, Usually when someone cheats, it's it, you can't blame it on the person unless it's re they make it really bad. But you can't blame right. it on the person got cheated on. Like, it's what what did I do wrong? Yeah. You, you As adults, you could have a conversation before that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always said, listen, because she was always worried that I was going to cheat being on the road and all that stuff. I said, listen, if I ever get that feeling, I'll come oh, and talk to you and say we need to work this out because I'm getting a weird feeling like I feel need to stray. Right. So let me fuck one of your friends and we'll call it even. <laughs> you know. And she didn't go for that. That's no, strange. I don't know why. I don't yeah. know why. I mean, Again, I thought it was reasonable. But she she didn't go for that and then she fucked around on you. What a piece. No, I mean, I didn't, I didn't say that, you know, let me fuck one of your friends, but I just, I don't know, I just, you know, I don't know, when you have that much fun and you did too, you know, it's like yeah. you got to a point where I'm, I'm okay. I, you know, I had my yeah, fun. Yeah. So if I got to be... 100% monogamous and loyal. That, that's no problem. Because I can't right. look back and go, man, I fucking, damn, I missed out. I did it. <laughs> I did it. What do you, hey, J Jim, what do you think your body count is? If you had to estimate your body count? Because I know you were fucking around with the roadies and the, the rock bands and fucking all kinds of, what do you think? If you had to put a... a I don't know, you know, because I was in a lot of long, re long relationships. So, like, right. when I'm out of them, There'll be like a little run I'll go on. But like, I've been in two seven year relationships. Okay. And I was also another four year relationship. And then I was between being married and, you know, with my ex, I was another like seven or eight years. So it's, I didn't have that much time to be single. And I was a late bloomer. I, I had two girls. By the time I was 21, I, I slept with two women. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was really, cause I was, you know, grew up strict Catholic. I was awkward and shit like that. And I didn't come out of my shell till like around 25 is when I really, Wow. I didn't go away to college. I only went to community college for two years, so I didn't experience that. Mm -mm. So I was a late bloomer. So not not that much. I don't um, know the number, but you know, it's if not. If you had to give me a ballpark, it's you, definitely not a hundred. It's definitely no, not that. really. No, that's crazy. You know, because you usually you have um, you got I fuck a lot of people's swagger. Do you know? Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. You, you, you just got oh, that guy. That guy gets laid. Oh, definitely. Well, when I had long hair, it was definitely it was a lot easier. When I had long hair, like back in like the '90s and stuff, it was still it wasn't really in style, but in certain states it was. So if you were traveling <laughs> to it. in Pennsylvania, it was they were like 15 years behind. So I yeah. was fucking 
you know, I look like Bon Jovi. They're like, holy, who's this fucking dude? I'd, I'd love to see your 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 map of the United States just <laughs> circled. It oh, was yeah, limiting, with, with, but he did yeah, well. Yeah, with all the pins in it, like yeah. where I got laid. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, there be, there would be zero in California. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like Seattle, zero. Yeah, that's the hot spot. But Delaware, man, <laughs> ninety-five South. Oh, yeah, Maryland, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Scranton, Scranton, absolutely. (laughs) You were hot as shit in Scranton. Florida, Florida was the best. I always Uh, told people, if you move to Florida, like, your numbers, like if you were back of a baseball card, it looked look like you were on steroids, your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, he, he must have been roids those four years. I go, not a few lived in Florida. And that was easy. I lived down there for a while, so. A little asterisk on your number. I, um, my, my whole philosophy was like, maybe I, it seemed like that, but I was like, I don't care. Like if a girl doesn't want to fuck me, I'm like, okay, you're not gonna, I'm not going to be offended. I really don't right. care. Right. Like I was like, I'm just going to go home and jerk off anyway. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like if you're here, that's great. If you're not, then that, that, it's not that big of a deal either. And if you're here and you're, and you're in the bathroom, I might, you might've lost your, that yeah. window. <laughs> you're close enough. You're in the next room. I'll, I'll get close enough. If that goes to arbitration, I think I'd win. Especially if you and Keith Robinson were on the board. <laughs> I had a, uh, somebody told, he, he was arguing with, uh, with some chick and she says, uh, she says, yeah, he doesn't talk to me anymore because I didn't want to fuck him. And he and keeps with us, you stupid bitch, you, do you know how many people don't want to fuck me? <laughs> <laughs> Keith is like, if I didn't talk to everybody who didn't fuck me, there'd be nobody to talk to. <laughs> Keith's a legend, man. We did some we did some damage early on in our careers on the road. And yeah. Keith, yeah. He, What's it like to be with Keith Robinson as your wingman or vice versa? <laughs> He's out of his mind. Yeah, no, I mean Keith, Keith nobody has a better rap than Keith. Like Keith in his prime was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like I he would watch what I would do and then I watch what him did. We had two different styles, but yeah. for, for some reason they both worked. Yeah. Um it's funny when they when all of them were going out to did you ever go out to Brazil with those guys or no? I'm lucky I made that decision not to go because uh-huh. I wanted to go. And I said, if I ever get like a serious girlfriend or get married, that shit's gonna come back to haunt me. That was out yeah. fucking prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. glad I didn't, even though I really did want to go and I was close yeah. to. Yeah, um, it's funny because uh this the, the this is the the untold story because he went out there with Patrice and Norton and Steinbergs and and uh, and Bobby Kelly and all those guys went and uh, Keith. So uh, some of them are like some of those guys are like were goofier, like they didn't really get laid until they started getting fame. And so Keith was like, so that when they went, some down, of those like, guys that describes yeah, everybody in comedy. Who the fuck was, gets laid and goes into comedy? To, I was trying to be uh, polite, but That's everybody. <laughs> but he. Uh, so in in Brazil, what they used to say, Patrice used to say this all the time that it's like uh, it's almost like you get the girlfriend experience. So it's like they were like, you don't you didn't call me, you like you don't like me, why why right? So all of them would kind of get one girl, and they would kind of chummy up with the girl for the whole period of time that they were out there. And you know what they call you know what they call it now, right? Um, passport bros. Did you hear this? You've heard this no, term? No. So that's that's what they call it now, passport bros, when you go out and you, you know, you go to Thailand or fucking Colombia or whatever, and fuck hookers and they and and a lot of them have a lot of dudes now have have withdrawn from the whole idea of having sex in the States because it's just too and it's so much easier out there. But they they give you the like the girlfriend experience. And Keith would go out with them and these guys would go shopping or something or go and then Keith would fuck all of their girlfriends while while it was <laughs> <laughs> Of course. I remember him telling me, I forget who it was, one of them hogged one of the girls. Like he yeah. wanted it, his girlfriend for like the like four days. He's like, give her up, man. So move pass her around. He's like, I like her. He's like, what the fuck's wrong I with think you? It was no it was Norton. Okay, yeah, I forget who it was Norton then, yeah. Well, he he actually did that to all of them. He fucked Patrice's little they you because they were getting this girlfriend kind of thing where it was like I'm hooking up with this one, and I would just kept hooking up with her to like had a, a little mini relationship. 
And, yeah. And Keith, they went shopping, and Keith was they, Keith was just Keith was just smashing them all. <laughs> and then they they weren't talking to him. They got all mad at him because <laughs> he was he was. They were like, "Don't you fuck my prostitute? Uh, <laughs> how could you do this to me?" <laughs> so it was funny. But um, yeah, it's it just I think you get older. I, I I just as you get older and you're mature, just everything is um. Everything is it's, it's sort of like you all of a sudden see the matrix, you know. Just everything is you. It, there's nothing you haven't seen. There's nothing that you haven't done. Um, I and I think it's more, even more attractive because I think younger women, the fact that you're not, uh, how should I put it? The fact that you're not excited about them, like you're not. Oh, oh my God! You know how like young guys get is more attractive to them anyway, you know, as a, as a, you, you said, you're 51 now, 50, 58, 58. So it's just, you, there's a, the fact that you're unaffected by your surroundings is one of the things that I talk about on the podcast all the time. It's, it's, it, it is the most attractive thing. The fact that you're unaffected. And I think it's because women find, uh, they feel a sense of safety in the fact that you're not affected by outside stimulus, that you you maintain that even keel, whereas a young dude, if the girl is hot or somebody else trying to talk to them, or it's all it's kind of this emotional fucking clam bake, and and um, you being calm about it and and also being honest about it is the thing that makes you most attractive. Yeah, I think so. Look, I, I thought, you know, for a long time, the manly man, the alpha male was yeah. out. Every girl wanted a beta, yeah. wanted a fucking pussy whip guy. Yeah. And that was the thing for a while. And I think and that that happened for there was like a four or five year run. I, I feel like in the last year, women are starting to come around. Go, I don't really want that guy. Yeah, I, I want that. I want the fucking the, the guy, a guy's guy. Yeah. A guy that's just a fucking man, because this I thought I wanted this pussy that will do anything yeah. and yeah. listen to whatever I say. I got no respect for him whatsoever. They all went that way, and then they realized, no. And then all of a sudden, like, all these girls fucking, they, now they're all, I was out of style for, like, four or five years right, after right, I got right. divorced. I'm like, fuck, man. And I feel, I feel the tide was turning, like, two years ago. I think when the pandemic ended, like, I can't take these fucking, yeah, these, these I thought pussy. I wanted a pussy, yeah. but I don't. And that's what women really want. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they want a guy that could take care of them, protect them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if there's some trouble or whatever, just just in that, just being a being a man and fix yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think um, they just want somebody who listens. I think a little bit too. Like there's a, it, oh. it, we took it too far. Is what happened. They wanted somebody. They wanted men to be sensitive, a little more sensitive than previous generations, and then it went all the way. Like all the way, like uber sensitive crybaby stuff. Yeah, but I don't. I, I mean, I mean, and, and we're close. We're two years apart. I don't. Uh, all of that. I want a sensitive guys. All the dirtbag dudes we knew always got laid. It didn't. They never stopped getting laid. Even at that time, with that that four or five years where they were like, oh, we want a guy. The 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 dirtbag dudes never. They never stopped getting laid. So I I think what happens is you can't. I, you know, I say this all the time and I, and you know, and I don't, I don't give a fuck. I mean, God, thank God this is on the internet, but like, I I go, I've said this to women all the time. you you don't know what you want. Your pussy does like <laughs> <laughs> attraction is a visceral thing. You, so you have this list. He's got to be this. He's got to be that. He's got to be this. Then you meet a guy fucking back in the days, Jim, you're in Scranton. You, toss your long hair a little bit and mm. she's like i'm in where, i'm in where are we gonna go well i don't i, I let the bathroom is good and they're like all, all right i'm in so it's like this this perception of the fact that women understand what they want when the when the reality is it is and then there's this whole thing about the gender gen you know like and i i totally get the whole fluidity of gender but at the core what, when you talk about this gender thing, I get it's fluid, but it's still the same thing. Men and women are different, and they want to feel safe. They want a guy to give direction and be decisive about what they want. And so I, I think what happened was we started listening to them about what they want. But you always, the same women who had 
said, I want a guy who's sensitive in this. Then the minute all of a sudden you're talking about your feelings and she's going, you know, it's like, I don't, that's the guy who gets fucked over in the yeah. end. Yeah, they feel like I'm talking to my girlfriend. But, you know, that feminist movement and the Me Too movement really, you know, man, especially around New York City, like in yeah. this, you know, more of, a, you know, liberal cities, L.A., yeah. San Francisco. We were out for a while. Like yeah. we, were the, we were the fucking enemy men. So the guys even became more pussies just to get pussy from them. So right, they, they, right, they, right. You know, so a guy like me, a guy like you, they would be like, oh, this, this, this guy's the devil. And I felt it on stage, too, for a while in New really? York. Yeah, like all the, of course, a white guy up there talking about how women are fuck, are a pain in the ass. Whatever it was, they would judge you right off the bat. It's starting to come around though, like I said. Yeah. But that 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 feminist and that Me Too and all that shit that men were the enemy for a while. Like it, everything it, we said, shut up, listen to us, believe yeah. all women, all that fucking bullshit. You know? Yeah, yeah. There was definitely a whole movement back, but I mean, I I mean, I'm I mean, one of the things I mean. It, you're you're kind of a guy that I always, I always personally liked. Like I wish we hung out more, right? Because I just felt like we, but we yeah. just kind of never. I was like, ah. so whenever I would see you, I remember I saw you out in L.A. and I was like, ah, yeah, you know, you you kind of, and then we just never really kind of got. You just was never in the same vicinity enough to do that. But like you, you've never changed. I mean. I, I shouldn't say that because I think you've evolved, we've all evolved and matured, but you, what you see is what you get with you, and you're comfortable in it. And I think you've always been made the attempt. I, I could say like my own stuff, just just to be a better human being. But I'm still a dude. I'm still not a pussy. I'm still a dude who's not. I'm not crying in front of you. Uh, it don't. You know. I mean, I have to. I kind of have to force myself to be. Um, sometimes I have to force myself to be empathetic. Like I, somebody's mother would die and I would be like, yo, people die every day. Like, I right. mean, you know what? I mean, it's, which is not wrong. It's because, you know, we even talk about when people, you know, like somebody will die. Like you said, like you lost your dad early, but if you had lost your dad at 88, it still would have been fucked up. Like it, yeah. there's no time where it would have been. Okay, it's time for him to go. You know what I mean? And and so I think it's the selfishness selfishness of people to go, well, I want to keep him here forever, you know, as opposed to looking at the the fact that the loss is a loss and you you learn to cherish what you got, but you I don't think you ever changed at, in in terms of what you did and maybe what they thought um what the what was in or what was out. Yeah, well, this this is what I got, you know. Never, this, never. Yeah. I've always been the same. I'm just like, yeah, I'll do the, you know. I just put my foot down. I'm like, you're allowed to, you're allowed to put your foot down. You're allowed to say no when you're in a relationship. You, yeah. you don't need to get walked all over because that's what they're gonna do, and they're gonna keep doing it and doing it and doing it. So at some point, you go, just you know, you have to fight for yourself. I always tell my kid that. Yeah. I go, don't get, you know, you, you got to fight for yourself, and if you don't want to do something, you're allowed to say no. Don't yeah. just say I have to say yes because she's gonna get mad. Fuck her. Yeah. So what? You know what I mean? I'm going to get mad if she doesn't do anything either. That's part of a relationship. Right, 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 right. You know, you can meet them halfway, but don't be, don't do everything that they they want you to do, even if you don't want to do it. And don't, yeah. because then you're going to be walking around on eggshells the whole relationship. But it's not even a relationship that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, so here's, here's what I, when you were saying that, I was thinking about, did you ever get a, con did you, have you ever gotten a conversation from your dad like that? Or, because for me, my dad never had those kind of conversations with me because, you know, they went to work, you know, <laughs> like they were, yeah. they were working and when they, but, but you, I did have a model of the way that he acted and I would just kind of, you know, like subconsciously you see this male figure and you go, Oh, this is, you, you know, as a little kid, you go, okay, this is what it be, what it means to be a man. And then you just kind of act that way, you know? But I never had those conversations. And and when you think about what a great dad you are to actually not just create the the model, but to have that conversation. Yo, let me let me explain the the the, the nuance of this and why this is the case. I don't think I don't know if you had that, but I know I didn't have that. I didn't either. You know, like I said, we come from a family of seven kids. My dad and my mom got married when they were like 20. 
Right. And they were together. And my dad was a super nice guy. He'd bring home flowers and yeah. presents and all that stuff. He was romantic. Right. And all this shit. So that's what I saw growing up. And right. then when I started, you know, going out there and trying to meet women, I, I was the nice guy. But women would just walk all over. They didn't want the nice guy. Right, right. You know, they wanted the dick. And so I was getting crushed early on. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, because I, I took, I took what my dad did in relationships, but it wasn't working. You know, especially girls in there at 20, 21, they want an asshole. They're not looking for a good dude. Right, right. At also, that point. your your dad is, he's in a marriage with seven kids, which is, a, you know, it's a little bit of a different dynamic than meeting a chick in a bar, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then I realized, like, all right, this isn't working. And, you know, I had a couple of friends. They were like, dude, you got to be a scumbag. You got to be a dirtbag because that's the only way you got to play hard to get. Just be a dick. And that's how I go. But I don't want to like, well, you have to. Then you, you want to get pussy. That's what you're going to have to do. Like shave that bad mustache off, grow your hair and you'll get laid. And then all of a sudden I did. I started acting like a dick. I didn't want I felt uncomfortable. Like, OK, this is working. So that's what I got to do. You, you know, it's funny because um, Harry's a nice guy. Mm. Right. And and um, I remember when. Because I don't know if you know, but I saved Harry's life. He did save um, my life <laughs> on multiple occasions. Multiple occasions. Um, because because you you get this, you get so much rejection that you, you lose, you start to lose your self esteem, and you start thinking, "Well, I'm not worthy of this, right?" Mm. And um, and so what's interesting about it is I used to say to Harry, my advice was them to be a dick, and he would go. You know, I don't want to be that guy, you know, and I, and I was like, you don't even you don't even have the capacity to be a dick. And I would say the same thing about you. Like you being a dick is is assertive at, at best. best, at best. Yeah. You know, if what you, mean? Like, you would it, tell me that if you tried to be if you tried to be the biggest asshole you could be, you'd probably end up being like a level three <laughs> out of ten. Like right. you'd, it would, you'd be like, confident. You'd, you'd be you'd, confident. Yeah. Like, wow, he's confident. You'd be at you go at worst. You'd be assertive, at the <laughs> right. highest level. Your okay. assholery. Right. But but it's it's weird because good dudes are always worried about. I I don't want to be. I'm not comfortable with that. And a lot of times it's just literally just putting your foot down. I mean, I you when you're younger, you think just saying no or just putting your foot down is like, oh, I'm being I'm being an asshole. And I so many times, I mean to this day, I still gotta go, Harry, what are you what are you what the fuck are yeah. you doing? What? I'm still too nice. But as as I get older, as it goes on, the the it's I understand more and more why Dante is the way he is. <laughs> because Dante's not an asshole, but he just he just cuts out the the middle ground. He goes, let's just go right to where this is going. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. I get and it gets shorter and shorter. That 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 window gets shorter and shorter for me, but it's still nowhere near what Dante's doing. But I understand why he does it now. Like I get it because this is what it's going to be. Let's just get right to let's just get right to it. Look, I could be a jerk when I'm dating or out there or trying to get laid or whatever like that. But once I'm in a relationship, I'm a good guy. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not, I don't I don't need to be a dick once I'm in a relationship. But I just know it's a game and that's how women want to play it. So I'm like, OK, I'll play your game. Let if me let what, me ask if you. If that's what you have to do, then I'll play your game. When you said I could be a dick, what what would be something that you would think is you being a dick? Um, You know, especially like uh. Well, playing it like hard to get. That was a big thing because, you know, OK, so I'm going to stay over. I think because I had a lot of options. I, I, I like if I worked a nine to five factory job in a small town, I probably mm -hmm. couldn't have been a dick because you're going right, to run right. out of options real quick. So right. just being out there, I knew if I didn't get laid from this girl that I liked, I'll be in Ohio next week and I'll probably see. <laughs> so I'll probably hook up with somebody. So who cares? Right. right. But I always be like I wouldn't if I my uh, there was one move that I always do because I know it always worked is. Women always go, yeah, you could stay over, but nothing's going to happen. I go, well, I don't want anything to happen. I go, we just met, so why would I? I go, I wouldn't expect anything to happen. That'd be weird anyway. So, of course, right. nothing's going to happen. Right. I wasn't thinking that at all. I just need a place to stay because I had too much to drink. Right, right, Okay, right. fine. And then you get in the bed with them, and you're like, all right, can I? You give her a kiss, and then you turn over, and you put the back to them. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times, they're grabbing your dick within two <laughs> minutes. Because mm -hmm. they're like, well, you, this guy's got some nerve. Where you're coming to my bed? <laughs> How you're telling dare me you're you? not into? How dare you? And you're not into it? When I just said, I'm nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, of course. I don't want anything to happen. You said you didn't always. And they're like, how? 
how dare you all this good pussy I got here and you you're not even going to make a t- you have the nerve to be honest about the fact that you just wanted a place that to- uh, you're going to take some of this pussy. I don't and care. Absolutely. And really, <laughs> even if nothing did happen, I wouldn't have had any problem with it either. I wouldn't be a dick in the morning. Hey, we want to go get some breakfast, whatever, stay over. I right. wouldn't care. And they're like, wait a minute. What, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Yeah. He just yeah. slept in the bed with me, didn't even make a move. And I didn't give him any and he's OK with it. So yeah, now they go, up- I got to chase this guy. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't care. Like, all right, I, whatever. No big deal. I got to, you know, so that's the way I always did it. So it would drive them nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm well, like, that's the game you want me to play. I, I I understand it. You know, especially the girl, we can't have sex on the first day. We can't when you're fooling around. No, no, no. Okay. We're not going to do anything. We're not. It's not going to happen. So let's just make out. Mm. We're not having sex tonight. Everybody, you already told me, and I know that. And it's mm. weird to have. And we're, so don't worry. We're just going to make out. And then within two minutes, they're grabbing your dick again. <laughs> but I, you know what? I think that something, it's like, because, you know, one of the things about this show is that I I look into the nuance to to understand it right on a, on a higher level and what I would say is you going sure we don't have to do anything in fact it would be weird for us to do something is really what you thought now you may know that time and time after again it doesn't end up that way but if it does end up that way, you're not mad because your intention really wasn't to get laid in the first place, which is there's a level of so. So, I, you know, Harry gets mad because I keep repeating this, but I mm. think we have a we have an um, acronym. It's called ACE, right? ACE is authenticity. Always tell the truth. Credibility. Always. If you do something, you say you're going to do something, you do it. Right. And empathy, understand that other people have, are going things that you don't that you're not going through. And it seems really simple. But when you follow those principles, you always end up on the good end of the on, on the right end of, of, of history, on the right end of the stick. And what happens is you end up getting laid more than it. It's not the six pack. It's not the good because if you got a guy. You got a guy who's got a six pack and he's fucking gorgeous or whatever. He's he's going to try. He's probably in a, he's he'll still fuck your sister. Do you know what I mean? So it's there's a because there's a morality and ethics that the fact that you go you you say I, I guess what you're saying you're saying this is the game they want to play, but you're playing a game with no intention. Like I always say, real game is no game. You, you're saying what you mean. If she doesn't fuck me, that's fine. I, I want a place to stay. And because it's authentic, right, you always end up on the good end of the, on, on the right end of the stick. Whereas if you if you play like as if that's re- you really don't give a fuck, but then you're grabbing tits and you're going, then they go, wait, 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 this guy is dishonest. And because he's dishonest, that turns her off because she's dishonest. Unless, of course, you're so hot that she had an intention on fucking you anyway, you know? So it's a weird kind of thing. Now I would go one step further. Like if I just wanted a place to stay, I would go, yo, no, I just, I just want a place to stay. But if I really go, look, I don't, I I can go to my hotel room and if you don't want to do nothing, it's fine. But then I'll go, I'll go back to my hotel room and I'm good. And there we go. Well, so you're not gonna hang out with me. I, here's the thing. I was in. Uh, remember Jokers? Uh, who was it? Was the club out in? Uh, I think it was PA. Was it Jokers? In Milwaukee or New Haven, Connecticut? New Haven. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so I go to Jokers, and this girl approaches me. She's about a, she's about a six, seven, right? Maybe a six. Yeah, more like a six. I go. She goes. She comes up to me, and she goes, um, uh, me and my um. Me and my sister, we want to come back to the room, right? Then she, yeah, she might have been a five. Let's be honest, because because I was like, oh, really? I was like, all right, well, here's my address, and uh, this is where I'm staying. You want to come through here, whatever? Just give me up, get, just give me a call. So she she comes back and she says, oh, my sister can't come. Um, she has to go back with the babysitter. Um, but I'm going to come. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, if you could, 
if you could bring your sister, that's you could come. But if you can't, yeah. bring your <laughs> sister, I'm, I'll just get some sleep. And she she was like, she goes, you serious? I go, yeah, yeah. If you if you can figure out how to get a babysitter and then you could come together, then that's fine. And if not, right? And uh, what's wait, the logic be behind right? that? Huh? What's the well, logic, the logic behind is, that? Is is the same thing. That that what 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 um Jim is saying about the honesty. Jim is going, yeah. If we don't do anything, it's fine. It's it's telling the truth. Mm. You didn't like and, that they wanted to bring two over. That you didn't like that they were being dishonest. I was no. I I, I was. I just didn't want to fuck one of them. Like mm. one of them, I wasn't into one of them enough to go yes. But if it's two of them, I was like, I'll I'll do it for a threesome. I'll, I'll uh, otherwise I'll go home and sleep. And it just it was just an honest, you know what I'm saying? It was just an honest perspective. That's how you felt, yeah. Being, I was just being honest, and because I was being honest, uh, they were like, but uh, so I I could come no, and she was I was like, well if you if you can get your sister to come, that's fine. She came back and she said, what if I can get another friend? I was like. Yeah, okay, we could do that too. But if I don't, <laughs> she's like, but if I don't, I can't get, then can I? No, right? No. And I wasn't mad and I wasn't angry. I just was like, I'm just not doing that. So, and, well, go ahead. Well, no, what happens? I want to hear the end of this. So she she ended up calling a friend of hers to come over. to, to, to was, Her sister couldn't get a babysitter. She got this other girl and they both came over and I fucking had a threesome. But, I, I don't even think they were angry. It was just like, I'm not mad if you can't. I'm not mad. And I didn't understand this then. But what I understand is me going, and, and you know this about comedy. If somebody hires you for some gig and your price is this, right? If you go, this is my price. I'm not doing it without it, with that amount of money then what you're telling the consumer is this is what my value is. And when they try to jew you down or they try to jerk you around and cut your money, you go, yeah, I'm not, I'd rather not do it at all. Then they go, all right, well, well, how about, th no, this is the price. Then people understand, okay, you know what your value is and I either got to meet it or not, but it's no harm. I'm not mad. I'm not, there's no hard feelings. And I think that is the thing is just the honesty of it is what makes it more attractive. And you don't give people room to be offended because what if she was like, oh, you'll fuck me with my friend, uh, but you won't fuck me by myself. And I would go, yeah, yeah. So now, what's the argument? There's no gray area in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it really isn't. <laughs> and she goes, well, wh why? I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not good enough. Yeah, like don't ask me these questions if you don't want to know the answer. And she got on the phone and like, yo, I'm, we're gonna fuck this guy, blah 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 blah. And it was like, okay. But I, I think the same thing is, I because I was stripping for so long, I, I just knew what my value is. It's like you as you as a, oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. You, you split up with your wife, right? Do you think she's Jesus already? Fuck. Mm. Um, this is going so quick. Um, do you think she would? She probably would want to get back with you. It's been eight years. She got remarried and shit. She got a kid, so I would say no. Probably because I know her. I like. I know. You know how her mind works, and yeah. I'm on to. I'm on to her basically. So she probably wouldn't. Okay, okay, okay. So that's that's maybe early on, but I, you know, when you and you have a kid with somebody and all that shit. So I, th I think no, I think uh, probably not. I wouldn't. I just, you know, right, right. I always just said, like, yeah, I, I, no, she never tried or anything like that. You know, so I think that um, she's like, I, I nailed them once. I can't get them again. I can't fucking bring them into my world again. Right, right, right. But I, I think it's also kind of, you know, I have, I have this saying. I say my truth, my truth sharpens your honesty and like you've always been like a like what you see is what you get you've always been an honest dude what i find is that when people are dishonest they once they realize that that there's no wiggle room for dishonesty they they 
get they they want to get away from you. Yes. They want to fuck with people who have who are dishonest to a certain extent because it gives you both both parties this this room to play around in this dishonesty. I won't really call you out on your shit and you don't call me out on my shit. But um, and I mean, I don't want to go into the too deep to where you I create problems or whatever. But I, I would imagine that that dishonesty is something you, you, you when you get older and you get mat- mature, that's the most important thing to me is just to have friends and people around me who are honest over anything else. That's more important than anything, because it, no matter what happens, I know where this person is coming from, as opposed to, you know, I'm full of shit. You're full of shit. And we, you know, we we, we never call each other full of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And those people get the fuck away from you, you know? Yeah, no, I just knew, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to worry about where my wife is when I'm on the road or I'm working. I, I can't, I don't want to, I don't even want to deal with that. I don't, I don't want that to ever enter my mind. Right. So I just said, I, I got to cut this loose. And I got a girlfriend now, and I told her, this is the one thing I won't put up with is cheating. If mm-hmm. you cheat, you're out. There's no question. Right. If I find out, you know, if you do it, you admit it to me, there's no turning back. And I go, look, I'm going to treat you great. I, I, she's like, I've never been treated like this before, the girl I'm right. now. And I go, I'm going to treat you so good that if you cheat, it's stupid. And yeah. it's not being from an ego standpoint. No, no, it's not. It's but it truth. really is. Like, I don't, I'm not like an ass kisser, but she's like, this is this the best relationship I've ever had in my life. I can't believe it. I said, I'm going to treat you great. Yeah. And if you cheat, and she knows the same thing too. And I'm like, I'm not going to. I told her, I said, listen, I'm not. You, mm-hmm. you got my word. Right. And no matter what, even if I'm in that situation, I'm like, I got a fucking great chick. Like, why would I do that to her? In my yeah. 20s, I probably would have been like, I don't care, or whatever. But as you get older, you like you appreciate what you got in front of you. Yeah. And it's not yeah. even it's not even a question if I yeah. would do it or not. So she trusts me like that. And I trust her like that, too. But I told her that's the one thing, the one deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's is it's also interesting because of the fact that I I, I always say, you know, I won't break my word. I don't even give a fuck about you. I'm not going to break my word is because my confidence comes from the fact that when I look in the mirror, I always tell the truth. I always keep my word and I give a fuck about people. So Mm -hmm. if you do those three things, there's, you can't be a better human being. I mean, two two things that you're always going to have to do is ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness because we're all imperfect and the, the, you don't always you, you don't always oh, don't always hit the ball right on the bot on the sweet side of the bot the bat and so people can be be offended. But if your intentions are truthful, incredible, and honest, you, you know you might have you might be offensive at times, and, you, and that doesn't even happen when you're honest. Um, but I won't even do it because. My my um my confidence comes from that. I know. I mean, if you think about this now, if you think about just male friends that, you know, how many male friends do you friends do you have that you could say always tell the truth, always keep their word and give a fuck about people? I mean, that, you know, that margin is small, you know. And and so the commodity that as a commodity is so valuable because nobody does it like supply and demand. There's so few people that are honest when you meet somebody honest. You know, it's a, it's a big thing. Let, you know what? We're going to do the Patreon. It's a little um, can you anything you want to plug in and we'll do what's on, what the show for the Patreon. I do a podcast. It comes out every Monday. It's called Everybody is Awful. So wherever you get podcasts, uh, you get that. Um, I'm on tour at jimflorentine.com. I got a bunch of tour dates coming up. So what's what's yeah, the podcast, podcast about? Like it's what basically it? about social media people fucking, you know, looking for sympathy on social media, posting stupid shit, you know. So people fans send stuff in and I just make fun of it. Dope, 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 dope. There's Harry nobody Tur- is more fun to listen to complain about oh stuff than Jim Florentine. <laughs> I, I it's it's I it's can really find an angle on anything. Yeah, Jim will find a way to make a sunshine sound <laughs> annoying. <laughs> He's fantastic. Um, my social media at Harry Turjanian is where you can find all my stuff uh, on YouTube and TikTok, especially. I'm loading up more stand up clips and um, also doing relationship consultations. If you want any advice, email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. Uh, you, yo, Google me, bitch. You know how to get me. Um, <laughs> 
Dante Nero. Love Dante Nero on Instagram, YouTube. My YouTube. I'm putting them a lot more stuff on, on my YouTube page. Um, and uh, don't forget the Patreon. www.patreon.com slash manschool202 if you really want to help us support this gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted yo i love y'all check us out on the patreon side um you know how to get us love y'all man we out